How did Android 18 become pregnant? That's what we're asking ourselves today here. And here at Blackscape, we pride ourselves in groundbreaking journalism in the Dragon Ball. And I'm going to tiptoe in anime as well, community. We're trying to delve into topics that nobody else is delving into. We're trying to break boundaries that are there for some reason, but fuck it, we're going to go past that. So if you guys have a topic, as I posted in my community tab, something strange, something weird, something that like, you know, you've thought of, but really like, you know, nobody has made a video on or nobody really talks about it in depth, but it is a good topic. Let me know in the comment section below, or let me know on that community post because I'm going to, I'm going to go look through it. And if it's something good, I will give you credit for it. And as you can tell by this video itself, then uh, yeah, we're getting into some crazy, crazy stuff here. Also, thank you for all the love in yesterday's video. You guys are freaking awesome. I want to push this channel in a brand new direction and you guys are coming along with me, whether you like it or not. So how did Android 18 become pregnant? Give me your thoughts in the comment section below. Let me know, how did this happen? How could this have happened? What led us to Marin? Let me know in the comment section below because, uh, yeah, this video is going to go through some wild twists and turns. And I'm telling you right now, by the end of it, um, you guys are going to be looking at this guy a little bit differently if I did my job right. So originally when I had the idea to make this video, I was thinking more of like this clip right here. As it so happened, she started out as a human being. Dr. Giroux just remodeled her a little bit. Whoa, 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 hey, 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 hey. So imagine this, you're like a 11 year old boy, 12 year old boy, whatever, watching Dragon Ball Z on Toonami. You don't get to choose when you watch it. You can't, you know, just skip to the next episode. You can't binge watch it. It just comes out whenever. So now we're in a time skip. That means years have gone by since the Cell Saga and you're about to go into the Boo Saga who just got past all the Gohan shit and the Gohan being in school. You got past the other world tournament and now you're going into the Boo saga and when goku comes back to earth which is something that like ha is being hyped up at this point goku's coming back for one day one day of goku coming back not to see his family though just going to the world martial arts tournament i'm i'm just kidding okay this is not that type of video but still goku's coming back for one day what is going to happen like this is insane right and then we get to it, but the craziest part of this reunion, it's not Goku seeing everybody for the first time. It's not even like, you know, Vegeta being somewhat happy to see Goku back, I mean, because you know he's happy. No, it is that moment where Goku is shocked to see Android 18 as part of the group, and Krillin has to be the one to explain to him, like, a, she's my wife now, we're married, and uh, yeah, we have a kid, and then Goku also being shocked, like, how can an android have a child, and Krillin having to be like, hey, you know, there's a lot of, <laughs> like, all the important parts are still there, trust me, Goku, like, trust me, trust me, all the important parts are still there, which we're gonna get back to here in a minute, because how Krillin knows this is actually kind of insane. So originally that was what my video was going to be about because I was I was wondering if there was like, you know, something there like lore wise, like schematics of like, which we're going to get back to, but schematics of like Android 18 and like what parts of her are are actual robotic and what parts of her are organic. And, uh, and if there's anything there, like, like how could she, you know, have a baby, there's more to that story. And, uh, turns out like, yeah, we kind of got all the information that we needed. Krillin kind of said it best because the only thing that was non-organic in the androids was the bomb that Dr. Jerome placed in them in case they went Looney Tunes and decided to cap his ass. That's the only thing inside the androids that is non-organic. Meaning that Android 18 and Android 17, both of them, they were literally the first versions of Cell. They are humans that were abducted and recreated into like these genetically altered super beings that are stronger than super saiyans 
everything is on a genetic level. Everything is on an organic level. He literally rewrote their DNA. Probably the greatest human achievement in all of Dragon Ball Z to create these two beings. And, um, you know, we haven't done it since. I mean, at least Bulma hasn't done it since, you know, to create these type of top of the line, like genetically enhanced people. These two are the first. Android 16 is just modeled after the son of Dr. Jiro. He is robotic. Android 20 and Android 19, Dr. Jiro, he just cybernetically changed himself. But 18 and 17, they're the real deal. They're completely 100% organic. And that is why they're the keys. They're the missing ingredients to sell who is an organic being to be able to evolve to the next level. Like that all kind of checks out like him having to absorb both of them because they're the only other two organic androids to make himself more uh, and I mean like you guys can see it yourself through his evolution he becomes more humanoid he becomes more human that is what Dr. Jiro envisioned and that's exactly what ended up happening so delving deeper into that there really isn't anything it's like an open and shut case like why am I even making this video you know but in my thousands of hours of research getting the best team over here in my secret lab going through the data pouring through the data this video topic still lives it still has an ounce of life like we can still resuscitate it you're asking me how like what makes this idea even interesting well i'm telling you right now it's because there is a nefarious person in dragon ball that has had only the most thirsty, vile, got that dog in him type of behavior since the Cell Saga that really kind of factors into this question how Android 18 got pregnant and I give you Exhibit A, this man right here. What the hell is even that? Now if you're Krillin sensitive, I'm about to portray this man in the darkest light that can possibly be portrayed on YouTube. And I don't think anybody else has talked about him this way, but I'm about to. Because this guy, like this guy literally puts the nefarious and nefarious activities here because he is not as good as a guy as he seems. He is not as honorable a person as we are led to believe. Now, he is a hero when it comes to different things that he's done and the times that he saved Earth. But ever since he's laid eyes on Android 18, I am telling you right now, this guy has been thinking with the wrong head. So first and foremost, let's talk about the blueprints. Yes, the blueprints to Android 18 and 17, the ones that I personally could not find. And the reason I couldn't find them is because Trunks took them first. Trunks took them in the Cell Saga. He went to Dr. Jiro's lab before they destroyed it. He takes the blueprints and brings them to Bulma because they're trying to figure out a weakness for the androids. That's where they find that there's bombs hidden. But look who is with Trunks going to get these blueprints. It's one of my favorite episodes, actually. It is this man right here. So what's so bad about that? Well, blueprints usually tell you the schematics. It tells you the outline of the design and all this in intimate information. And it has a lot of information on there that is everything that we know about whatever subject is on that paper. That includes history, that includes information that is hidden, and again, the outline of the design. That is how they found out that there's a bomb in there, that there's a bomb inside these beings. But that is also how they found out, number one, is one that we know for sure, that there is only a bomb inside these androids. The rest of them, or organic they're basically super soldiers you know captain america on steroids they are you know, on, in a league of their own right and the ones that we got to see i believe was 17s but 17 and 18 they're a pair they're twins they have the same schematics so that means that krillin had in-depth information on what he was working with when it came to the androids and how much of the androids, as he told Goku, 
are human. <laughs> like, can you believe that? He knew this before anything else went down. Like, he had just met Android 18. That was basically it. Now he knows what's under the hood, essentially. He knows that she's good to go. Like, she's basically a human. Like, he basically got x-ray specs to be able to see what's going on on the inside. Now, the next thing is a little bit harder to prove, but I feel like schematics would have this sort of information that is the history of the subject, the name, the designation, everything, right? So the names that we got, Lapis and Lazuli, from Akira Toriyama many years later on Android 18 and 17 are more than likely, I would bet 80% in those schematics. Not only do you have that, but you have the history of them and possibly their age. We know as the audience that Dr. Jiro found Android 18 and Android 17 as he was looking for subjects and they were teenagers. He kidnapped them and reassembled them and now they are stuck essentially being teenagers. Now, you could be under the misconception that 17 and 18 are their ages, right? You would think, you know, oh, Android 17 is 17, Android 18 is 18, that makes sense. No, it does not, because they're, they're twins, so they're the same age. Meaning that, in the best case scenario, they're 18, as far as teenagers go. If you're saying 18 is an adult, then they're 18, if we really want to give Krillin the benefit of the doubt. He possibly knows all this information, or at least knew this information after he started dating her. He knew that, you know, whatever history she knew, she had beforehand, right? So he knew this going in. Then we have the fact that the androids don't really age, right? The androids, as has been said before, not only by Jiro, but by Toriyama, like, they're... they're aging is so slow it could be slower than saiyan's aging so regardless of how many years that there actually are they remain whatever age they were made into androids like they kind of remain in that age at least looking like that so we have here some really really young looking androids that age extremely slow and the designs stay as teens then you have krillin here who comes in and smashes the remote, putting the entire planet in jeopardy just to showcase to Android 18 that he has her back and that he can be someone that she can trust, right? Like, he put everything on the line so that she knew that she could trust him and not by not blowing them up, essentially, even if it meant that Cell wouldn't get them. She saw this before she got absorbed, ultimately. And then when she is saved, she sees him and he doesn't make any any intention to hide it. He yells it out to Shenron to remove the bombs because he's trying to be nice. I mean, yes, in a sense, but again, those bombs are so destructive that they thought that these bombs could possibly hurt Cell. I mean, 16 thought so. So these bombs are not something you want around you if they eventually by accident go off or something happens and they go off and you're just Krillin who is susceptible to the detonation and, and, and dying a charred death. Because he already knew that he wanted to go for 18. He already knew that that is somebody he wants to pursue. Keep in mind that by the time the Cell Saga comes around, Krillin's already in his 30s. He's a grown ass adult. So he already knows what he's doing. He kind of has it all figured out. Now, whatever happens in between the Cell Saga and the World Tournament Saga, leading into Boo Saga, we don't really know. At some point, Android 18 falls in love with Krillin, but we do know how it started. And uh, I mean, you can take this as canon, I'm taking it as canon, but in Dragon Ball Z Kakarot, we get to see what the first date of Android 18 and Krillin actually looks like. I actually made an entire video about it like years ago. And this first date entails Android 18 coming back after leaving uh, Kami's Lookout and coming back and thanking Krillin after seeing him do all this stuff for her, thanking him for removing the bombs. And, and then she's about to leave. Krillin asks her for a date. I mean, what does she have to lose at this point? This guy kind of demonstrated everything, even though like he knows all this information about her. He's really into her. And, you know, at the same time, he did all this stuff to get her to like him. And then really there's no other choice besides, you know, okay. Because remember, she's like a brand new human, essentially. Like she was built. She was born. She doesn't really have memories from the past. She's basically brand new, fresh out of the box. 
so to speak, <laughs> so to speak. So she's extremely naive and Krillin, I mean, he shot his shot and he got that date. Then years go by and Krillin does the most devious shit that I've ever seen a Dragon Ball character do. I mean, this is like Frieza levels of deviousness here. And he ends up marrying 18 and they have Marin together. Boom. Just answer the question of the video. I just explained their entire their entire history here in the worst light possible, but it gets a little bit worse. And that is that he ends up naming his daughter with Android 18, Marin, which is the name of his ex-girlfriend. Try to name your baby girl the name of your ex-girlfriend or try to name your boy the name of your ex-boyfriend. See how well that goes. My belief here, because of how hot-headed Android 18 gets and how fastly she is quick to get angry, I don't think she knew anything about Marin. I'm talking about this one right here. I don't think she knows anything about her at all. I think that she's super naive and doesn't know anything about that situation. She does get jealous, as we've seen here in the newest arc of Dragon Ball Super, where she calls out Krillin for having that dog in him. As you can see here, it doesn't trust Krillin to go out on his own or doesn't trust him talking to girls on his phone. I think when it comes to dating after getting dumped by Marin, Krillin has been on demon time. He saw this chick that's really beautiful, found out a lot of her back information, like, like her make, her model, her year, put out a lot of self-sacrificing acts to make her fall in love with him, knew that she was fresh out the box. So that's why he, uh, you know, put up the charm and shot his shot. Then he named their daughter his ex's name, didn't tell her, and now I'm assuming he's talking to girls on his phone, I don't know, that's kind of what's implied by Android 18, like, not trusting him, essentially, in the superhero arc, but let me know in the comments below, I don't know, I, I don't mind Krillin, I just wanted to, uh, you know, I honestly just wanted to keep the topic of this video, and uh, this is the only way that I figured how to do it, but it is true, like, it is kind of strange, like, the way that it all kind of progressed with Krillin and Android 18, but let me know what you guys think, I know I've gone a weird way since yesterday for this channel, but yeah, you guys ain't seen nothing yet.